when you try to set a very reasonable boundary with a narcissistic parent and they ask you, why are you punishing me? If this is something that you have dealt with, watch this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and feel free to leave any comments or share this with anyone who might benefit from watching. In today's video, I'm going to help debunk what that all means, why they say things like that, and how you can stay grounded in reality so that you can understand what is happening here and what this manipulation tactic is really all about. My name is Adriana Bucci and I am a certified life coach empowering survivors of narcissistic abuse to heal, set boundaries, and live life on their own terms. I currently have a community membership going on. It's super affordable. Check out the link in the description for more information if that's something you're interested in being a part of. And without further ado, let's dive right into the content of this video. So let's say you have tried to set a boundary with your narcissistic parent and just the example I'm gonna use in this video. And honestly, whatever scenario that any narcissist really says this to you, basically very similar gist. They're just trying to put you on a guilt trip at the end of the day, but let's just, you know, set up some context here. So let's say you have a narcissistic mother, for example, and she keeps talking behind your back about your personal life to whoever will listen. And you're kind of tired of that. It's none of that person's business. No one needs to know this stuff about your personal life. And this is something that you confided in like confidence with your narcissistic mother. So it's like, why like, Hello. So you try nicely to approach the topic and you tell her, hey, you know, I'd really appreciate it if you would stop telling people, you know, the aunts and uncles, the cousins, your friends, my friends, parents, whoever. Uh, it would be really nice if you could stop telling them things that I shared with you in what I thought was confidence. And if you continue to do this, I'm not gonna be sharing as much with you anymore because I don't know if I'll be able to trust that you're gonna keep it confidential how I hoped you would have. Basic respect stuff. And then your narcissistic mother comes at you and responds with, you know, her crocodile tears and the tiny violin you can hear in the background. And she's all like, why are you punishing me? So the thing for you to understand is that you're not punishing your narcissistic parent by setting a boundary like this. It's absolutely not a punishment and it's absolutely ludicrous that anyone in their right mind would believe that a boundary is a punishment. And narcissists are not in their right mind. So they will say that and what you're actually punished, you are technically punishing them, but the punishment is that they're getting less supply out of you and less supply out of the whole situation because when they talk behind your back and they gossip, it's fun for them, it's entertaining. They get to hear other people's opinions about the situation that they probably embellished to make themselves look like the victim and you look like the asshole like they always do. And they're pretty much using the emotion of guilt to manipulate you into not having this boundary with them. It's a distraction. They are distracting you by making you feel guilty. So you're focused on how guilty you feel and how you must be a horrible person and that distracts you from the actual issue, which is what they were doing to begin with, which was going behind your back and telling people things that you did not want them to go behind your back and tell people about. And you know, a reasonable parent would probably say something like, oh, thank you for telling me. I do apologize. That was not okay of me. That was super uncool. It won't happen again. And then they actually follow through with it not happening again. Whereas a narcissistic parent will not have a reaction like that. They might say something like, oh, you know, I'm sorry it won't happen again, but then it keeps happening. And you can, you can tell the difference between a reasonable parent saying it and genuinely feeling bad. A reasonable parent wouldn't have done it to begin with, right? It wouldn't have been this whole pattern. And you really wouldn't be setting this type of boundary unless it's happened more than once. That's because of the conditioning from the narcissistic abuse at the end of the day right? You end up tolerating a lot of bullshit. Eventually it reaches a breaking point where you have to say something. And then, you know, that gives the narcissist the opportunity to say, well, why didn't you come to me about this sooner? They'll try any way to like avoid the actual topic and they will just try to attack you instead of, you know, acknowledging that they, you know, violated your trust. 
So at the end of the day, it's really just a manipulation tactic to mess with your emotions, to make you feel guilty because people who feel guilty are easier to control. Narcissists know this. This is why they are experts at guilt trips. And this is pretty much how that cycle continues and stays alive and well. And you know, you end up having to suffer the long-term consequences of this. And one of the really awful long-term consequences of this sort of upbringing and this sort of guilt trip manipulation tactic is that you end up kind of living your whole life thinking you're a horrible, unreasonable person by having basic needs, by wanting basic human decency and basic respect from people, including your parents, right? These are the people that you are, you already trust them by default just because they are your parents. Whether you're born to them or adopted to them, you literally relied on them for your survival. So there's already that level of trust that exists. And narcissistic parents really take advantage of that trust. It's like biological trust. Like it is hardwired into us on a survival level that like when we're children, these are our parents, whether you're born to them or adopted by them, you biologically are wired to see your parents as gods and like all knowing. So you're gonna trust every word they say. And that creates conditioning that continues throughout your life. And some people never realize how much time they did end up wasting by believing into this narrative, by buying into this narrative, because you don't really do research on this until you're aware of it. And it can take decades to become aware of it. And some people never become aware of it at the end of the day, which really sucks. But you know, luckily now we live in a day and age where the internet is more and more accessible, more people are finding out about narcissism, but still it takes a while for people to find out. And then you wake up to the fact that all this has been happening and it's like, wow, I actually wasted so much time feeling guilty about something I didn't need to feel guilty about because this other person wanted supply because that's what it's all about. It is about supply at the end of the day. Supply is your emotional reaction. You engaging, giving the narcissist attention, praising the narcissist, arguing with the narcissist. Any attention is supply for them. The thing with narcissistic parents is that they had a predispositioned purpose for you before you existed. And that purpose is to be a source of supply for them. You basically exist for their entertainment. It is disgusting. And it's not like they're gonna say that to you straight out because who says that, right? And if you knew that, you'd be like, okay, that's messed up, I'm out. And it would be really easy for you to like go no contact or estrange yourself from your family of origin because you know how messed up they are. But they're not gonna actually say that because if they did, <laughs> you, you would know. And so they wanna keep you in that bubble of confusion so that the cycle of abuse can continue as long as they can make it continue. So the solution really is to not give them any supply, which easier said than done, of course, especially if you have repressed emotions at the end of the day. So doing that inner emotional work is something that is baby steps, one baby step at a time. Notice what the emotion feels like in your body. Get support if you need to, right? You can work with a therapist, you can work with a coach. I also have my own coaching community that has two tiers and you can find the link for it in the description right here. And it's a community of amazing survivors of narcissistic abuse who are on their healing journeys as well. I am very active in it myself. So, you know, you'll get some of my guidance depending on which tier you go with and you get access to a whole bunch of courses, live events and the community. So there's different tiers to choose from. Check out the link if this is something that you'd like to be a part of. Just a quick announcement that I'd like to make is that on September 14th, 2022 at 3 p.m. I will be hosting a live workshop on how to be guilt trip immune. And this is happening only in my community, only for tier two. When you join tier two, not only do you get the workshop and live access to it, plus the replay for 90 days if you can't make it live, but you also get access to all the other amazing perks in the community, including one-on-one -on -one Voxer coaching. One day per month, everyone in tier two gets to connect with me on Voxer for a chunk of time so that all time zones can be considered and whatever it is that you're going through, you can kind of go back and forth with me, I'll guide you, etc. And it's only $65 per month. So this is a really great deal. I'd encourage you to jump in on it now before 
tier two really explodes and I can't take on new members for it, it's still a very small group. So jump in now while you still have the chance and I look forward to guiding you. And it'll be so worth it for this workshop if guilt trips are something that you struggle with and you wanna gain some tools to become immune to guilt trips and just see right through the BS and the manipulation tactics by staying grounded in reality and not going into the repressed emotion. Again, the link is right here, down here in the description. Check it out and I hope to see you there. If this video has been helpful for you, please like it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. To leave some comments about guilt trips that the narcissist in your life has tried to put you on. And be sure to share this video with anyone that you know who might be struggling with guilt trips from the narcissist in their lives who might benefit from watching this video. Bye, see you next time.